Hello, good day. It is indeed a wonderful day, as today we will learn more about our national hero as we will try to look back and trace the timeline of his early childhood and his education. I really hope that by looking into one of the most important events in his life, we will learn an important lesson that we can use and something that will inspire us in a way for us to become a better individual. Jose Protasio Rizal Mercado y Alonso Rialonda was born on June 19, 1861 in the town of Calamba, Laguna. He was baptized Jose Rizal Mercado as a Catholic of Calamba by the parish priest Reverend Rufino Colantes with Reverend Pedro Casanias as his sponsor. He was the seventh child in a family of 11 children. Both his parents were educated and belong to distinguished families. Nineteen June eighteen sixty one, Jose Rizal, the seventh child of Francisco Mercado Rizal and Teodora Alonso y Quintos, was born. Twenty two June eighteen sixty one, he was baptized Jose Rizal Mercado at the Catholic of Calamba by the parish priest Reverend Rofino Colantes with Reverend Pedro Castañas as the sponsor. 28 September 1862 The parochial church of Calamba and the canonical books including the book in which results baptismal records were entered were burned. 1864, barely three years old, Rizal learned the alphabet from his mother. 1865, when he was four years old, his sister, Concepcion, the eighth child in the Rizal family, died at the age of three. It was on this occasion that Rizal remembered having shed real tears for the first time. 1865 to 1867. During this time, his mother taught him how to read and write. His father hired a classmate by the name of Leon Monroy, who, for five months until his death, taught Rizal the rudiments of Latin. At about this time, two of his mother's cousins frequented Calamba. Uncle Manuel Alberto, seeing Rizal frail in body, concerned himself with the physical development of his young nephew and taught the latter love for the open air and developed in him a great admiration for the beauty of nature. While Uncle Gregorio, a scholar, instilled into the mind of the boy love for education. He advised Rizal, work hard and perform every task very carefully. Learn to be swift as well as thorough. Be independent in thinking and make visual pictures of everything. 6 June 1868 With his father, Rizal made a pilgrimage to Antipolo to fulfill the vow made by his mother to take the child to the shrine of the Virgin of Antipolo should she and her child survive the ordeal of delivery which nearly cost his mother's life. From there, they proceeded to Manila and visited his sister Saturnina, who was at the time studying in the La Concordia College in Santa Ana. 1869. At the age of eight, Rizal wrote his first poem entitled Sa Aking Mga Kabata. The poem was written in Tagalog and had for its theme love for one's language. 
1870, his brother Pashano brought Rizal to Binyan, Laguna. He was placed under the tutelage of Justiano Aquino Cruz, studying Latin and Spanish. In this town, he also learned the art of painting under the tutorship of an old painter by the name of Wang Cho Carrera. 17 December 1870 Having finished his studies in Binyan, Rizal returned to Calamba on board the motorboat Halim. His parents planned to transfer him to Manila where he could continue his studies. 1871 His mother was imprisoned in Santa Cruz, Laguna for allegedly poisoning the wife of her cousin, Jose Alberto, a rich property owner of Vinyan and brother of Manuel and Gregorio. 1872 For the first time, Rizal heard of the word filibustero, which his father forbid the members of his family to utter, including such names as Cavite and Burgos. It must be remembered that because of the Cavite mutiny on January 20, 1872, fathers Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora were garroted at Bagumbayan Field on February 17, 1872. 1872. The Jesuits were considered the best educators of Spain and perhaps of Europe, and so when they were permitted to return to the Philippines, although their power to administer parishes was restricted except in the remote regions of Mindanao, the privilege of founding colleges, they had to apply to the city of Manila for subsidies. That is why the college which began to function in the year 1865 was called the Ateneo Municipal. To enter the Ateneo, a candidate was subjected to an entrance examination on Christian doctrine, reading, writing, grammar, and elementary arithmetic. Jose did not take his entrance examinations. Jose did not remain in Manila, but returned first to his town to celebrate the fiesta of its patron saint. It was then that his father changed his mind and decided to send him to the Ateneo instead. Since Mercado, the first surname of the family, had come under suspicion of the authorities because it was the name used by Pashano when he was studying and working with Father Burgos, in whose house he lived, Jose adopted the second surname, Rizal. Pashano, who accompanied Jose, found him a house in Walled City but Intramuros looked gloomy to Jose, and he later found lodging outside in the house of Spencer, situated on Cal Carvalho, district of Santa Cruz, as if chance would furnish him data for his future campaigns. He became acquainted in the house with various mestizos begotten by friars. The Jesuitical system of instruction was considered more advanced than that of other colleges in the epoch. Its discipline was rigid and its methods less mechanical. It introduced physical culture as part of its program, as well as the cultivation of the arts such as music, drawing, and painting. It also establishes vocational courses in agriculture, commerce, and mechanics as a religious institute. Its principal purpose was to mold the character and the will of the boys to comply more easily with the precepts of the church. The students heard mass before the beginning of the class, which was opened and closed with prayers. In the first two terms of the classes were divided into groups of interns and externs. The first constituted the Roman Empire and the second the Carthaginian Empire. In each empire, there were five dignitaries 
emperor, tribune, decurion, centurion, and standard bearer. These dignities were won by means of individual competitions in which it was necessary to catch one's adversary in error three times. The empires considered themselves in perpetual warfare, and when an individual of one empire was caught in error by one belonging to the enemy empire, a point was counted in favor of the latter. At the end of each week or two, the points in favor of each were added, and the empire, which obtained more point, was declared winner. There was a fraternity of Mary and St. Louis, Gonzaga, to which only those who distinguished themselves in the class of further piety and diligence could belong. This fraternity meet on Sundays and after Mass held public programs in which palms were recited or debates were held. With all these inducements, it was only natural there should be a spirit of emulation a striding to surpass one's colleagues found in the Ateneo. The first professor Jose had was Father Jose Beck, whom he describes as a man of high stature, lean body, bent forward, quick gait, ascetic physiognomy, severe and inspired, small sunken eyes, sharp grishon nose, thin lips forming an arc with its sides directed towards the chin. He was somewhat of a lunatic and of an uneven humor. Sometimes he was hard and a little tolerant and, at other times, he was gay and playful as a child. Among Jose's classmates were Peninsulares and sons of Peninsulares, Francisco G. Oliva, very talented but not very studious, Joaquin Garrido, endowed with a poor memory but with much talent, and the industry, and Gonzalo Marzano, who occupied the throne of emperor. From the first days, Jose learned to systemize his work. He fixed a program of what he had to do in the 24 hours of the day and did not in the least deviate from it. Thus, he disciplined his will and subjected it to the commands of his reason. As a newcomer, Jose was at first put at tail of the class, but he was soon promoted and kept on being promoted so that at the end of one month, he had attained to the rank of emperor. At the end of the term, he obtained marks of excellence in all the subjects and in the examinations. He had reason to feel proud of his advancement. And so, when he went home on vacation that year, he ran alone to see his mother in the prison and tell her the happy news. He must have uttered this exclamation on learning from his mother that they had played her a mean trick. The judge, who was a blind partisan of the friars, having been a domestic of theirs, told her that if she confessed her culpability, he would release her at once. With a desire to see her children again, she pleaded guilty. But the judge, instead of releasing her, convicted her. In a few months, the judge asked her forgiveness for what he had done because, according to him, his conscience hurt him, but the case had no remedy because it was already an appeal. The second year, Jose had the same professor as in the previous year, but instead of lodging outside the city, he resided at number 6, Calia Magallanes, at the end of the term, he obtained a medal, and upon returning to his town, he again visited his mother in jail alone. This was three months before her release. The rejoicing that her release produced in his spirit had much influence on the result of his studies in the third year, 
for he began to win prizes in the quarterly examinations. About that time, he devoted himself to reading novels, and one of those he enjoyed most was Domas' father, the Count of Monte Cristo. The sufferings of the hero of the Twelve Years, he also asked his father to buy him a copy of the Universal History by Cesar Cantano, and according to himself, he profited much from its perusal. The family who saw in Jose great aptitude for study decided to place him as intern or boarding student in the college the following year. In the corner of the dormitory facing the sea and the pier, Jose passed his two years of internship. In the fourth year of his course, he had Father Francesco Sanchez as professor. Jose describes him as a model of rectitude, solicitude, and love for the student, and he studied mathematics, rhetoric, and Greek, and he must have progressed much. For at the end of the year, he obtained five medals, which pleased him immensely, because with them, I could repay my father somewhat for his sacrifices. His aptitude for poetry revealed itself early, and from that time, he did not cease to cultivate it. An incident which demonstrates Jose's independence of character took place at this time. Father Loncho Lopez, parish priest of the town, who was a great friend of his father, also liked Jose as a little friend. He was cultured, but at the same time, timid and tender. One day, Jose's mother showed Father Lopez a poem of his young friend and that the latter must have copied it from a book. Jose, who heard this, answered the priest violently, for which his mother reprehended him. Afterward, Father Lopez came to know from the Jesuits themselves that Jose was a pupil who excelled in poetry and in spite of his age, made a trip to Manila expressly to apologize to Jose. That gesture of Father Lopez won him Jose's esteem and they became good friends again, lending each other the books they had. In the fifth years, Jose had other professors, fathers Villa Clara and Minevis. He studied philosophy, physics, chemistry, and natural history. But his devotion to poetry was such that his professor in philosophy advised him once to leave it, which made him cry. But in his rest hours, he continued cultivating the muses under the direction of his old professor, Father Sanchez. Jose had then written a short story Leenda, which was only slightly corrected by his professor, and the dialogue, which was enacted at the end of the course, alluding the collegian's farewell. However, philosophy just and served, inquiring into the workforce of things, interested him as much poetry, physics, drawing back the veil, the divine drama of nature was enacted. Natural history seemed to him somewhat an interesting, although he much liked the shells and sometimes imagined seeing a goddess in each shell. He was on the shelf. Jose was considered small of stature, and he tried to correct this defect by applying himself regularly to gymnastics in the college. He also engaged in other physical exercises, such as fencing. After his baccalaureate, he surprised his family with his skill in handling the sword when he gave an exhibition bout with the best swordsman of the town. He also devoted time to painting and sculpture. In drawing and painting, he was under 
the guidance and direction of the Ateneo professor, the Peninsula Don Agustin Saez, who honored him with his affection and consideration because of his progress in sculpture. His instructor was the Filipino Romualdo de Jesus, who felt proud in the last years of his life of having had such an excellent pupil. So that's it. It was such a joy and full of learnings, tracing the timeline of the early childhood and education of our national hero, Dr. Jose Pirizal. One thing is for sure, I've learned amazing and useful things. Now, I would like to thank this application because it served as my major reference in creating this output. So thank you so much once again. God bless us all. Keep safe, everyone.